adventure, new and thrilling experiences, sports, recreation, spine-tingling action, and the challenge of friendly competition. Yes, these people are having the time of their lives. They are Texans enjoying themselves in the state parks nearest their own front doors, availing themselves of all the wonders, the good times, the varied opportunities that these parks offer. In every section of the state, in every kind of terrain, at every altitude, there are parks to suit the taste of every Texan. In all, the state parks embrace over 60,000 acres. And last year, they provided fun, frolic, and happy recreation for more than four and a half million visitors. One of the most popular of all the state parks is beautiful Lake Brownwood. Located very near the geographic center of Texas, it thrusts up its green hills and spreads out a hundred miles of shoreline in a tempting invitation. Because of the park's central location, the sightseers and the holiday-minded come from all directions. Stone and timber cabins set far back from the road on a high bluff above the lake assure privacy. Also, a feeling of closeness to nature, far from the bustle of city life and traffic-clogged streets and highways. These cabins are air-cooled and comfortable, and well-equipped for an overnight stay or for a whole vacation. Many people bring their own tents and trailers and set up for carefree housekeeping under the shady trees. However, if the fun of cooking out wanes, there's always the park cafe and the attractive dining hall with Outlook Tower. Lake Brownwood is a fisherman's paradise. The 7,500 acre lake offers a fine supply of bass, crappie, and channel cat. Many sensational catches have been made here the addicts of Rod and Reel return again and again, hoping always for tougher fights and bigger catches. The catfish are said to be the largest freshwater cat in the entire state. A beach lodge provides ample accommodations for parties who come for fishing or other park activities. And for the last minute fishing enthusiasts, the park makes fishing licenses and bait easily available. Boating is a favorite pastime on Lake Brownwood. Often they can be seen scampering across the lake's shimmering surface. Hundreds of these small, tidy pleasure craft. During a season, as many as a thousand boats make use of the lake's dock facilities. Many people bring their boats from great distances. And a natural ramp simplifies launching a private craft brought into the park by these landlocked sailors. Popular for fishing and boating, true. But perhaps Lake Brownwood State Park is known best of all for the numerous family reunions that are held here. Almost every weekend during the summer months, young and old gather to celebrate the golden anniversary of a kinsman or the birthday of the clan's matriarch. Or perhaps they just come for the pleasure of an old-fashioned reunion. The old to share memories, the young to enjoy today. Lake Brownwood is at its best in summer, of course, but year-round there are attractions for those seeking recreation. Yes, winter or summer, there's something for every member of the family. Whether it's an overnight stay or a long vacation, time spent at Lake Brownwood in the heart of Texas is a time of happy experiences, of pleasant recollections. Residents of the Austin-San Antonio area have several state parks to choose from when the outdoors calls. First, there's Bastrop State Park. 2,100 acres of beautiful woodland, including the Lost Pines of Texas. Lost because no one knows how they happen to appear in this part of the state where pines do not normally grow. Swimming, diving, picnicking, and golf are among the many diversions offered visitors at Bastrop. Rock cabins that make up the pioneer village are air-cooled and modern. 
The group camp enjoys such popularity with church organizations that requests for reservations often arrive a year in advance. Many denominations have been represented here. 30 miles below Bastrop is Lockhart State Park. Here there are many opportunities for good times, dancing, picnicking, swimming. But perhaps this park is best known for its exceptionally fine nine-hole golf course. It's also popular for its famous lookout place, affording the viewer a panorama of the gently rolling hills, the dense woodlands and streams of this area of Texas. South of Lockhart, between Luling and Gonzales, the visitor will find what many believe to be the most fascinating park in the entire state. Palmetto State Park offers old and young alike a unique experience. For here is a gorgeous botanical garden, seemingly lifted from the tropics. It embraces what has been described as the only area of its kind in the southwest. Scientists explain its origin as due to an outcrop of the Carrizo Sands, the result of a deep trough cut by the San Marcos River at this particular location. Palmetto State Park gets its name from the luxuriant growth of dwarf palmettos. This type of palmetto, native to the Florida Gulf Coast, is exotic to an area such as this. Wild orchids, water lilies, phlox, gallardia, paintbrush, and the profusion of other flowers in season are pleasant sights for all. For botanists, however, the growing things are a profound interest. They say that in this park can be found every plant known to grow between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. The rare vegetation here has drawn scientists from all over the United States and parts of Europe. Universities use Palmetto as a field laboratory. The natural beauty of the San Marcos River, which flows through the park, and the artesian wells of warm sulfur water also add to the interest of Palmetto. Many visitors are intrigued by the mud boils and seepage of natural gas from the river bed. Bogs, covered by a spongy growth of moss, rare in this area, attract visitors too. And the quaking bogs are the source of awe and amusement for many. It's easy to understand why this lush tropical island was selected for a state park. There are no facilities for overnight accommodations here, but provisions for day outings are numerous. They include a beautiful main building with a refectory for snacks and cold drinks and a dance terrace. A large group picnicking unit is located near the main building where parties of 100 or more may gather. and smaller units are available too and in great demand. These have concrete tables and benches, and some are equipped with barbecue pits. Yes, here is one of nature's wonderlands, a place of strange, mysterious fascination, a paradise for scientists, an environment of unusual sights and sounds for any visitor. Beautiful Palmetto State Park on the San Marcos River. Fascination and beauty of another kind await the park visitor among the rugged granite hills in the Highland Lakes country of Texas. Here, within eight miles of each other, two state parks offer special attractions and opportunities for recreation. The first is Inks Lake State Park, a sportsman's playground. To reach it, the visitor travels along a magnificent loop drive that skirts Inks Lake. In some places, the drive is almost at water's edge. In others, on heights overlooking the water and offering glimpses of Pack Saddle Mountain and other landmarks. Inks Lake is the control basin in the stairway of a series of highland lakes extending over 150 miles along the Colorado River above Austin. Inks is the first lake below the giant Buchanan Reservoir and is used for measuring out the water to be let downstream from the storage basin. Its level, therefore, is almost constant. This means easy access to boats and to fishing spots at all times. The lake itself covers 900 surface acres and is three miles long. At Inks Lake State Park, there are ample camping and trailer areas and limited overnight accommodations. 
A combination boathouse, concession, and headquarters building is the principal structure now in the park. It is surrounded on the lakeside by a large dance terrace. Water sports and fishing are by far the greatest attraction at Inks. Boats are kept at the park and outboard motors may be rented. Many visitors bring their own boats. There's ample room on this huge lake for water sports of every kind. And all summer long, boating, water skiing, and aquaplaning keep the air filled with spray and spume and with the shouts of the merry participants. Action, sun, and water. There's no happier combination for a vacationer than this. Fishermen like Inks Lake particularly because of the black bass they catch here. A known 16-pounder is in the lake. Nine and 10-pound catches are not unusual, and the average weight is high. There are also white bass, blue, yellow, and channel cat, crappie, and brim. Beyond Inks Lake on the Loop Drive, the visitor comes to the Longhorn Cavern State Park. In the heart of 500 acres of scenic picnic grounds, this park enjoys tremendous popularity. Here is located the third largest cave in the world, a place of exotic subterranean beauty, containing the largest deposit of crystal of any cave known. High school groups, geology students, and just plain tourists find its beauty and the legend surrounding it irresistible. Sam Bass, notorious bandit, used Longhorn Cavern as headquarters for his raids on the countryside. The entrance to the cave bears his name. When he was dying from gunshot wounds, someone asked him where he had hidden the vast loot he had accumulated. In the cave, he whispered. If the treasure is there, it is still to be found. But the whispered words of Sam Bass suggest visions of hidden treasure. Eight miles of the cave have been explored. The conducted tour the visitors take, however, includes only two miles and goes to a depth of 120 feet. But in those two miles, the visitors will see countless rooms and corridors of exceptional splendor and formations containing all the colors of the rainbow. In the Hall of Diamonds, the walls sparkle as if millions of the precious stones have been set into them by the hand of a mighty jeweler. Electric lights concealed in the walls and on the ceiling illuminate the splendors here and throughout the cave. Among other favorites with visitors are the giant icicles, the elaborate stalactites hanging like chandeliers from the top of the cave. These glistening icicles were formed perhaps hundreds of thousands of years ago by water slowly dripping through the limestone strata which form the cave. Numerous walls of the huge cavern are another source of wonder to tourists. Each layer of the tremendous walls represents an age in the formation of the world before it was inhabited by human beings. There is ample evidence that prehistoric man made use of Longhorn Caverns. Numerous flints, arrows, and spearheads have been found here. Also, crude tools and reported beds of ashes and charcoal. In addition, the cave has yielded the bones of ancient bison, bear, and possibly camel. Our more recent ancestors made use of the cave too. Here, gunpowder was secretly manufactured for the Confederate Army during the Civil War. State park visitors in the Highland Lakes area have many thrills in store. Magnificent scenery, lakes, and the challenge and adventure of Texas Longhorn Cavern. For those who want an outdoor holiday in the Panhandle area, Palo Duro Canyon State Park offers superb natural spectacle, geological wonders, and history at its romantic best. This 15,000 acre park is 30 miles from Amarillo. Here the canyon drops suddenly from level prairies to depths of over 1,000 feet. Part of the canyon is accessible by scenic railway. Many visitors, however, prefer to pay a small fee for a saddle horse or packed burrow at the park entrance. They are then free to ride Coronado's trail as they seek out the canyon's many wonders. This trail closely follows the one used by the Spanish explorer and his troops in 1541. 
Of all of nature's mighty spectacles in this vast chasm, perhaps the one visitors find most awe-inspiring is the lighthouse. It's the result of erosion through the ages and was given its name by Coronado because it resembled the lighthouse towers of his native Spain. Devil's Tombstone is another tourist attraction. It is the largest pedestal rock in Palo Duro, standing 75 feet above the canyon floor. The sites of Kiowa and Comanche Indian campgrounds are a reminder of the raids and the terrors of a not too distant day in our history. Nearby can be seen mortar rocks in which the Indians ground their mesquite beans, meat and grain. Just beyond the Indian campgrounds is Colonel Charles Goodnight's dugout. This is the first white man's home in the area. Colonel Goodnight set up headquarters in the Palo Duro in 1876. He is said to have run 10,000 head of cattle in the canyon. If the visitor to Palo Duro is a geologist or a rock hound, then Triassic Peak will be of absorbing interest. Here the strata of the Earth's crust takes us back 300 million years into the geologic past. Resting on the terrace of El Coronado Lodge, the vacationer can continue to marvel at these and other wonders sculptured by erosion through the ages. If visibility is good, he may see through the huge picture window the beautiful fluted formations called Spanish skirts because they resemble skirts worn by Spanish dancers. Riding back along Coronado's trail, the sightseer with sharp eyes may surprise prairie dog, jackrabbit, or deer. Yes, the park visitor here will say it is indeed beautiful Palo Duro, filled with the grandeur, the whims, the idiosyncrasies of nature. He will say, too, that no Texan should miss them. Another state park noted for its beauty is located in the northeastern part of the state, easy distance from such cities as Texarkana, Longview, and Kilgore. It's Dangerfield State Park, offering a truly scenic playground for fun and recreation. The visitor entering the mile-long drive forgets that he is actually in the center of a highly developed industrial area. As the car winds through a profusion of native trees, pine, chinkapin, elm, dogwood, sassafras, the whir of machinery, the blast of a factory whistle seem far away. And if one is lucky, he may see a red fox, possum, or squirrel. For the park is in part of a sanctuary for small animals. The road emerges at last on an 80-acre lake that mirrors the tall evergreens lining its shore. Perhaps it's the lake that holds the greatest attraction for visitors, for here there are many opportunities for action, fun, and wholesome competition. The swimming season at Dangerfield State Park Beach begins April 15th and continues until after Labor Day. Paved walks lead from the spacious bathhouses to the beach, which is situated about midway on the east shore of the lake. Lifeguards are in attendance at all times while the beach is in use. A large diving platform anchored offshore is so popular that literally hundreds of aquatics, amateur and professional, vie for its use during the weekends. An aluminum diving board and other beach sports devices add to the pleasure of the swimmers. Boating and canoeing are pleasant pastimes at Dangerfield too. A large boathouse and docks occupy a peninsula extending into the lake at a location convenient to a parking area. Many visitors bring their own boats. Others rent them by the hour or day. Whenever the weather is right, the fishermen of North and East Texas converge on the 80-acre lake, and little wonder. It is abundantly stocked with bass, crappie, and white perch, and the catches are good. The lake is cared for and fertilized under the supervision of the Texas Game and Fish Commission. Dangerfield State Park has a limited number of cabins for overnight visitors or for those wanting a longer holiday. They are air-cooled and comfortable. 
Because of the limited accommodations, however, Dangerfield has become popular chiefly for one-day outings. Group and family picnics keep its shaded picnicking areas in almost constant use. Additional picnic sites consist of combination tables and benches adjoining cooking facilities. In the late spring, many senior classes from high schools all over the state celebrate Senior Day at the park. During the past two years, hundreds of senior groups have used the park's dance terrace and water playground. Laughter, music, gaiety, dancing and water sports all make Senior Day at Dangerfield State Park an occasion to be long remembered. In fact, for teenagers or oldsters, any outing at Dangerfield will be long remembered. For there, Texans may enjoy recreation in a setting of unusual scenic beauty among picturesque wooded hills in the invigorating climate of Northeast Texas. For those seeking recreation at higher altitudes in air that is clear and brilliant, there is Davis Mountain State Park. Situated near the head of Olympia Canyon, this park offers views of some of the most inspiring scenery of Mile High, Texas. The park itself occupies but a small part of the vast mountain area. However, it is so centrally located that visitors may get to all the interesting places easily. The park is on Scenic Loop, a 74-mile highway climbing in some places to an altitude of 6,270 feet and never dropping below 4,844 feet. For the visitors on this drive, there's a panorama of matchless beauty, Sawtooth Mountain and Mount Livermore. And at lower levels, the fantastic outcroppings of rock and the giant palisades along Olympia Creek. The park is close to McDonald Observatory and the Harvard Solar Laboratory. The Davis Mountain skies, free of dust and sound waves, offer scientists uninterrupted study of the stars, planets, and constellations. By advance arrangement, Visitors can look through the giant telescope at Saturn's ring, the moon's valleys, and other sky wonders. In the vicinity of the park may also be found the crumbling ruins of old Fort Davis, which guarded the overland trail. Fort Davis afforded protection for early travelers. It also provided a base from which to control the Chihuahua Trail used by raiding Indians. With Apaches and Comanches concentrated nearby, this area was one of the most fearsome in the entire Southwest. The fort's location was carefully planned to use the surrounding hills to good advantage. Sentries stationed atop the ridges could spot approaching Indians and signal the fort of an oncoming attack. Inside the park proper, the visitor comes upon Indian Lodge, a Pueblo-type adobe structure built on six levels. Indian Lodge is a beautiful, rambling, graceful building, completely right for geography and history of the area. It is also functional, for it offers state park visitors sleeping quarters, dining facilities, and a recreation and game room. But before visitors enter this interesting building, cameras are usually brought out, or invariably they find the shaded patio, the lodge wall angles, and the background of canyon cliffs, irresistible for picture studies. Heavy stone stairways lead from the patio down to the lodge entrance and up to the first level of sleeping rooms. All furniture is handmade of Indian design. The woodwork is embellished in Indian reds and yellows. Curtain rods are fashioned from tall century plants. The spacious lodge recreation room has windowed doors opening onto the patio on one side and to a roofed gallery on the other with porch chairs, shuffleboard, and other furnishings. Meals are served a la carte in the tile-floored dining room on the lowest floor level. Indian Lodge has become so noted for its food that ranchers and townspeople of the vicinity often join tourists and vacationers for the delicious meals. Park visitors who bring their swimsuits can reach San Solomon Springs by driving down beautiful Olympia Canyon and over Wild Rose Pass. Here, 26 million gallons of 72-degree water flow into one of the world's largest wall swimming pools. The pool is a favorite with skin divers, and its crystal clear water affords the onlooker an interesting view of this fascinating water sport. 
Yes, there's adventure, challenge, and invigorating fun for everyone in these and the numerous other recreational state parks of Texas. And there are other types of state parks, too. Historical parks, where students of history, and particularly out-of-state visitors, find reminders of our dramatic past. For instance, Goliad, forever associated with the name of Fannin and the men who died with him there in mass slaughter. Monument Hill near LaGrange, burial place of two groups of fighting Texans. The men who drew the black beans of death in the Meyer expedition into Mexico, and Captain Dawson's men who were killed in the Battle of Salado. Another famed historical site is San Jose Mission in the southern part of San Antonio. Built in 1720 by the Franciscan Fathers, it is said to be the most beautiful mission on the entire continent. Its famous rose window has attracted tourists from many faraway places. Other historical sites which no Texan and certainly no out-of-state visitor can afford to miss are the Alamo in the heart of San Antonio and San Jacinto Battlefield in Houston. Here, a lofty monument commemorates a battle which led to victory of Texans under Sam Houston over the Mexican army. So in every section of the state, there are parks to suit the taste and interest of every Texan. Parks with such picturesque names as Possum Kingdom and Goose Island. Parks in the hill country and on the Gulf Coast. Parks named for distinguished Texans, Garner, Jim Hogg, and Mother Neff. And all offering the pleasure, the relaxation, the joys of the great outdoors. Actually, every citizen of Texas is a shareholder in the state's 60,000 acres of beautiful parklands. But only those who use the parks can receive their dividends. Write today to the State Parks Board, Austin, for the name of the park in your area. For every one of us, there may be waiting adventure at our door. <laughs>